In this example, we're going to create a more advanced tagging panel in the Dartfish Easy Tag application. This is probably only important to look at if you are considering importing the data created in the application into Dartfish at a later stage. Otherwise, you can review the simple tagging panel creation if you're only using EasyTag as a standalone device. So let's start the application. And we're now going to go into the panel section. In the Easy application, I showed how to create a couple of simple buttons. So we're going to return to that panel, which is this soccer panel. And I, you'll see there I have two buttons already created. So to begin editing, just click on the button you want to edit and up will come the parameters and properties that you are able to change. And you'll see that the next property down value automatically takes its setting from the label. And I think for the moment you can leave that take its setting automatically. The one thing I would definitely consider changing is the category setting. So if we click category, we're taken to its properties. So in this case, we're going to add a new category. Now having a good understanding of how Dartfish itself works will help you create an easy tag panel. But simply, a category is a group of events. So if you want to group certain sections together, you would use a category setting to do so. And I think if you don't understand EasyTag or Dartfish in that much detail yet, the best way is if you have a Shots on target and a Shots off target button, you would like to group them under the same heading of Shots, which is what we're going to do in this case. So I simply type in Shots and click Save and you can see now that that parameter is added. And I will do the same with the other button when we come to it. The next one down is whether you want the button visible or not. I think you always want it visible. Do you want to show the event count? I think using easy tag and getting the information live is extremely important. But for those of you who may not want to see the number of times that event has occurred during the match, you can simply toggle that feature off. I'm going to leave it on for mine. The next is the colour which I showed you how to change. Again, it just involves toggling these buttons either side, depending on what colour you want to make the button. The next two are perhaps the most important, especially if you're using this information to import into Dartfish at a later stage. So one is the duration. So how long do you want the clip to be? So what we first of all want to do is set the duration on. Okay, This allows us to change these parameters at the bottom. So in this case, I want my shot to be a total length of 12 seconds. And then I can click Save. But obviously, I can make it whatever length I want and just click Save. So I've made the duration 12 seconds. But probably more importantly is setting the pre-roll function to what I want it. So again, we click on pre-roll. Now to understand pre-roll, basically pre-roll works is when I press the button, the software will give me the option to record information that may have already happened. So for example, if I was to use shot on target as a button in this case, by the time I press the button, it's likely that all the information I want to see has already happened. So in that case, I need to set this, the settings that they go back and record all the information I need. It won't be exact and you won't get it right first time, but it will allow you in Dartfish then to edit afterwards. All you're looking for now is to get it as close as possible. So again, just make sure you toggle it on. And we want it to go back in this case, so we need to set it to minus in order to go back. And I would like it to go back maybe 8 seconds. And again, I click Save. So you'll see here my two settings. Pre-roll means it'll go back 8, but it'll give me a total duration of 12. So it means when I press Shot on target, the software will give me 8 seconds previous and 4 seconds afterwards. And then I can just return to my panel. Those settings are changed. And then I would repeat exactly the same for shot off target. Again, setting my category to shots and clicking back. And then you can change your duration and pre-roll accordingly. And you would just repeat that process for each and every button that you wish to create. And that's your tagging panel made. So when you return to your panels, you'll see it's labeled soccer 5x2 or 8x2 whatever you've saved it as, and at any stage you can go back in and re-edit the information if it's not what you're looking for.